the genius of Carl Sandburg. Notice that he began our passage with the idea that he was shot in the back of the head, right, assassinated. Look at the last line on page 506 and marvel with me. The selection of words is what we call diction. Remember, it's the what is it, how does it work. We can point out the fact of the what is it, but we're going to ask how does it work. Read it with me, the last line on page 506. We are now reading at the very close level, but I hope you can appreciate this. Notice this. We'll begin the paragraph. With vast reservoirs of the comic and the droll, and notwithstanding a mastery of mirth and nonsense, he, Lincoln, delivered a volume of addresses and letters of terrible and serious appeal, with import beyond his own day, shot through here and there with far, thin ironics. Shot through? Why would he use the term shot through? Well, this is again, selection, diction. Sandberg wanting to take you back to the primary motif that this great president was shot. Who would shoot him? Why would anybody shoot him? Because as loved a man as he was, he was also a very hated man. Hated? Why hated? Sandberg is telling us. Because he was a normal human with all different sides to him. And if you're a normal human, you're going to have your friends, but you're also going to have your enemies. You're going to have the people that love you. You're also going to have the people that hate you. That's called being human. You cannot be a real person and please everyone. It doesn't work that way. It does It's never worked that way, right? This is an interesting idea for freshmen who are about to start high school. I speak a lot of times with seniors who will say, sold myself out early on in my freshman year because I wanted to be friends with everybody. I hated the idea that somebody would ever laugh at me. I was willing to do anything as a freshman or a sophomore because I wanted to be liked. And now that I'm a senior, it's starting to dawn on me. Dude, you can't please everyone. It doesn't work. you got to find something you stand for, and you got to live those things. And Sandberg wants to say, that's exactly what Lincoln did. He knew what he cared about. What did he care about? Your country. That's what he cared about. He was willing to do whatever it took to make sure that that country would survive. Look at my comments on the Gettysburg Address and see those final lines of the Gettysburg Address, Lincoln had some serious concerns about whether it would make it or not. He really did. He, he wasn't certain. He wasn't this confident guy that knew everything was going to end out okay. He was pretty sure, in fact, at times in his presidency, it was done and over with. Whoa, well, that's a little different view sometimes than our view that he always was in control. Not quite so. Finally, the thesis comes to its penultimate end in the last paragraph. Perhaps... No human clay pot has held more laughter and tears. The facts and myths of his life are to be an American possession shared widely over the world. This because he was not only a genius in the science of neighborly human relationships and an artist in the personal handling of life from day to day, but a strange friend and a friend friendly stranger to all forms of life that he met. A fascinating idea. In other words, let's go ahead now and work at level two. Our major message is here. This is surprising to some students who picked this up. They assumed we were going to hear all of the fine points about all the amazing things that Lincoln did. And when they read this, they're like, oh, oh, oh. This doesn't, this, dude, that's illegal to violate the Constitution. That's illegal. Why would one person have that kind of power? That's called a dictator. We don't have dictators in America. We have presidents for... In other words, Sandberg's going to make some points. Let's list them at 2A. One, Lincoln was a real human being. Let's not turn him into a myth. Right? Number two, Lincoln understood what mattered to him and to his life and to his country. And that, of course, was his country. If you're not a patriot, it's not your fault. If you're not a patriot, it's because people like me haven't given you enough reason to be a patriot. Reading a text like this can make you sit up and say, whoa, whoa, this is, this is a really important moment in my thinking and in my education. Lincoln represents what it means to be a well-rounded person, a full person. The laughter and the tears, right? Finally, number three. Let's say it. Emerson says it, a 3A observation in his classic essay, Self-Reliance, to be great is to be misunderstood. 
Definitely Lincoln fits that category, doesn't he? Very much a misunderstood. It is the case we often make assumptions about people in history or even in our school. And we think we know everything. And Carl Sandburg is saying, you don't know everything about this guy. Let me tell you some things you didn't know about this guy. Before somebody put a bullet in the back of his head, somebody shot his hat off. You know this, Lincoln always wore that really tall stuff. Somebody shot his hat off to send a message to him or to try and kill him. Nobody knows. Of course, let's talk now at 2B. What makes this such a compelling read? I've had students that say, I didn't really want to read this, but once I started reading this, I couldn't stop reading this. What is it that makes Sandberg's prose so accessible, so easy to read? Some will say it's that he is able to solicit ideas and pictures in my mind that kind of stay there and there's a residency to them. His word choice is compelling. Some like the fact that he begins with the killing of the president, and from that moment, it's kind of a little bit of drama, maybe, right? That leads us, that leads you to want to write, uh, read more. But let's remind you at 2B, this is a few lines from six volumes of 30 years of life of research. Six volumes. So in other words, this is just a little bit of what Sandberg says about Lincoln. Of course, I hope, maybe at some point in your life, you'll decide to do what a lot of Americans have done, and pick up those six volumes and read them and be blown away by this person named Abraham Lincoln. And then all of a sudden he doesn't become just a, a, a face in a picture or on Mount Rushmore in a rock face, but he starts to become a real human being for us. At 3A, what is your favorite kind of representation of Lincoln? Do you have a movie where he ends up? There are lots of them. In fact, he ends up in all kinds of things, like video games even, and stuff like that. Sometimes you have this guy, Lincoln. What is for you, in, as you're thinking about the idea of great people, who is for you the greatest leader that ever lived and why? Who's the greatest person you ever heard about that was a great leader and why? At 3B, that I will ask some personal questions, two at least. Uh, I told you we'd start here, we'll end here. Uh, one, what is for you the one thing out of this reading that shocked you the most? You're like, no way, I didn't know that. Write that one down. The thing that actually makes you go, wow, that really does surprise me that that is said about the greatest president of our nation's history. And then number two, and more interestingly, I think maybe even to you, to what degree are you like Lincoln? Is there something about what is represented here of Lincoln that makes you go, you know what, that's kind of like me. I once had a student I taught this essay to who said out loud, you know what, I've always spent half, I seem like I spent half my life in school in the principal's office. I was the one always pushing against authority. I was the one always telling the teacher uh, yours. And now all of a sudden I'm looking at this guy going, whoa, whoa, whoa. So you're telling me I can take that kind of energy and do something good with it. Yes, that's exactly what we're saying. I can take that and turn it to something powerful. I can be a leader of people, even though people maybe dislike me. I can prove to them I'm useful. It's not a question of whether you're good or bad. It's a question of whether you're useful. Do you have a goal? Do you have an understanding of who and what you are? Of course, it makes sense that if Lincoln had been Hitler, we wouldn't talk about him that way today. That is a very important observation. Lincoln was no Hitler, even though he at times acted like a dictator. What's the difference? Lincoln had a heart. Lincoln had a powerful heart of love. What he was doing was done out of love. And if you are acting out of love, if you are acting out of a goal, then your life will be far more productive. In other words, think of it this way. Lincoln gave up his life so that others could have a future. Like you. Right? That was his goal. That was the way that he gave his life's work. And of course, that's a challenge, isn't it? To ask, in your future, what will you do to use your abilities and your talents to try and help others? Not just yourself. He was a man of tremendous power. He could have done it all just for himself, and he didn't do any of that. Why? love. He cared for a nation that ultimately would become you. You are that nation, which is a fascinating idea in itself. Well, there you go. An introduction to both Carl Sandburg, who I hope you'll want to read more of, and of course, Lincoln himself as well. Thank you.